OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Here we go. Let's try either, uh, use your phone for the QR code. This is a nice little app called Classroom Screen. You can either go to joincrs.com. You can point your phone at the QR code. CRS.com, you have to put in this phone number. If you use the QR code, it already sets up that phone number. So you should see uh, four or five choices, and basically it's where you are in your school. Uh, simultaneous instruction. So while, while you do that, I'm going to go to the website so we can see the results. Um, okay, so of the people who responded, it looks like we had 10 people respond. The question was, where are you or your school at in terms of implementing some form of simultaneous online and in-person instruction? And so it looks like six people or six participants stated that you have been offering high flex hybrid and blended simultaneous instruction in any form. Uh, two of you have said that uh, you're in the process of planning that now. Uh, nobody said, uh, I'm not really thinking about it. And also, uh, we've tried some form, the last one was we've tried some form of sim simultaneous online and in-person instruction. Uh, it, it, it got a little bit cut off there, but it, it's supposed to say, but we gave up. Yeah. Okay. And then the last one was some other option. But anyway, uh, this is called classroomscreen.com if you want to use it in the future. It's a really great online tool. Am I okay? Am I talking? Yes. Or hearing? Okay. Uh, for doing this type of thing. Notice also I've got the nice little clock up there because there sometimes you're presenting in rooms where there, you don't have a clock. So in any case, that's that's that. That gives me a, a good idea about where you are. Okay, so um, it's important for me to sort of give a definition of what it is that I mean. Uh, by simultaneous instruction, because it's still relatively new and a lot of the terms haven't uh, solidified yet and people are calling all sorts of things, uh, you know, the same thing, different names and using names for different, ex different things that are different. So this is what I mean when I talk about the way uh, North Valley Occupational Center is doing simultaneous instruction. Um, the term that sort of you, you've probably heard it here a few times this uh, during this uh, symposium is high flex. So to me, high flex has three components. There's the in person in the classroom component, uh, synchronous online instruction, where which would be like a Zoom meeting, and then the third part is an asynchronous online instruction. And my understanding of the you know, the, the way that people are talking about high flex is uh, the student can pick at any time any of those or none of those. Well, not, they have to pick one of them, but they don't even have to participate in the other two at any time. So you could be in a course and just go to the learning management system, read the, you know, all the assignments, watch videos, and you would have completed all the requirements for that class. You don't have to attend. Or you could be sitting in the classroom and do nothing online, okay? Or uh, any combination. One day you could come to class, another day you can work online. So 
So that's my understanding of high flex. Is that pretty much what you guys have been? High flex includes one, two, and three. One, two, and three. You're saying simultaneous is one, right. and two. And so what I'm saying is we're not doing this. We're only doing uh, in-person and synchronous online instruction, not unlike this presentation in that, you know, there are people here in the room and then there are also people online. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's what we're taking to, to mean uh, in our, the way we're using it. So uh, before we get to the actual, how, how we do that, um, there is a, a, what I call a big picture issue that's happening in our adult division. And that is uh, basically the division has opened up a hundred percent online school, and it may some maybe some of you attended uh, the presentation earlier in the in the day about that. Uh, so we have ten major sites up until this past year, and now they've opened up what they're calling the Adult Education Virtual Academy, which is supposed to be a hundred percent online, and so. Um, it sort of, as I say here, begs the question, if they're trying, if, if what basically what they're doing is like previously up, up until now, every site, well, first of all, during the, you know, the 100% online uh, instruction, we were all online. And then of course, you know, our schools reopened to a certain extent, and there was a combination of in-person classes and then, 100% online classes. Okay, I'm sure that's familiar to, to all of you. And um, and then some of those teachers who are teaching the online courses, of course, they're teaching them because they, they themselves needed special accommodations. And so they were not coming back to campus. They were still working 100% uh, online. So this is for the teachers and for the, for the students. Uh, and then they opened up this 100% online virtual academy. So now it's sort of the idea is they're going to sort of concentrate. They're going to start moving 100% online courses from our individual branches and consolidating them under the umbrella of this online academy. Okay. Uh, schools will still have the option of offering the blended type class if they want. And there may even be some special circumstances where. Um, like an online class will remain at a campus depending on whatever special circumstances there are. But it does sort of even you know bring up the question, if you have this whole effort to do 100% online here, you know, at this website or this at school, and moving the courses that are still on campus back to totally in person, do we really even need this blended instruction? And I think, and so what I'm trying to say is by listening to the students, students still would like to have at least that as an option because, you know, like sometimes they want to go to class and then other times they can't. So that's really where I'm, I'm going for. But, you know, we don't know. It may, it may turn out to be that the teachers themselves say, you know, it's a lot of extra work to do this blended type of instruction. And you have to have some extra skills and you have to you know, pay attention to what the people in the chat are doing. And of course, like right now I have the added advantage of having a, somebody to keep an eye on the chat, but do you necessarily have that uh, in your own class? <laughs> look, at, look at the face there. <laughs> I'm sorry you fellows, on, well, people well, online can't school, see that. The last two years where you know, they were trying to do this with 40 students at 20 or 12. Yeah. So uh, like, unfortunately you couldn't see his face for those of you who were uh, <laughs> offline, but that was like a, a tremendous look of like scorn and rejection and like, you know. <laughs> yes, we want A's in every class. <laughs> so, <laughs> Gary, in this 11th site, this, this virtual, are teachers wherever they want to be? Uh, th this slide here? No, no, no. I, uh, in, in this oh, the site. In the new academy, yeah. Are the teachers centered in a location or are they wherever they want to be when they're giving class? Some of this stuff is new. Okay. The idea uh, is 
they actually don't have a, a physical location. So the way it works right now is if you're hired to teach in this online academy, you have to show up at a actual physical school and teach from that school. So you may be like sitting at the desk in a classroom somewhere, hopefully at a school site near is to you, and then no others, nobody else is in the room, it's just you. Uh, that's the way it works. We have some of the teachers who are teaching in that program, who, and there's still some of the teachers with a com that need accommodations. So as long as they can do that, there's, they can still work from home. But as soon as the, that whole thing ends up, or finishes, or the district says no more accommodations are necessary, there's no more pandemic, there's no more nothing, right. you know, then they would have to come back some school site, yeah. Um, okay, so in any case, it's, it's an interesting question about this whole idea of whether or not it's even necessary. So right now at North Valley, uh, the school where I work, who is actually teaching simultaneously? Not a lot, only, only three courses, okay? Uh, and mostly it's because of you know, maybe the teachers themselves were interested uh, in doing it that way to maybe boost their in, enrollment. And, uh, and then one, our professional development series, which is what I manage. So we've got one ESL course, one citizenship course, and one ASL English bilingual education for the deaf course. And I, I want, what I wanna explain here is the teacher is deaf, okay? And the students are all deaf, but not native born typically. These are our immigrant students who arrive being deaf, many times are not, you know, they, they don't know their own language very well either because of their uh, being deaf when they grew up. So he's actually teaching American Sign Language so that those deaf immigrants can communicate to deaf people who are here who only speak American Sign Language. And he's also teaching English, standard English grammar and English language because they also need to know about English. And, uh, and, and just to make sure it's very clear, English and American Sign Language are not equivalent. They're two very separate that's languages. See that. yeah. So that's a, it's a really wow. interesting course. Uh, and, uh, it seems to be working out well uh, at I this point. For, her as a teacher, we had a hard time finding an ASL teacher. Uh, our our teacher is a rather special individual. Okay, so anyway, how are we actually uh, doing it? So very basic, minimal equipment. We don't really have the fancy microphones and the owls and the the really. We don't have one of these. Oh my God, these. Do you guys like this campus? The, the, some of the equipment that you see in these rooms here, really, really nice. So here's our teach. One of this is our ESL teacher, Mr. Jones, and you can see there are some of his in-person students, and he's just got a regular screen and a. We do have a ceiling-mounted uh, LCD projectors, and that's how he's managing. And this is uh, Mr. Hilterman. Uh, he is our deaf. Uh, uh, and language uh, uh, instructor. So in this case, you can see he he's just got a standard monitor he's in front of it. He's got a little webcam up on top, okay? And there's a deaf student there in the background, just, on a, just like in this room, you know, you have stations along the wall. And so the student is also in the Zoom from that station. Well, and, there are other people that are virtual Right, also from home. the call. Right. Okay. And actually, because you know the program itself is sort of rare, we do get people from quite a distance because yeah. they've heard about, oh, we actually have an yeah. ASL for the program here where the students can learn American Sign Language and it's taught by a deaf instructor. Does that make sense though? Because Northridge, Gallaudet has on the East Coast has the most, like the biggest deaf school, and then Cal State University of Northridge is the second biggest. Yeah, right, yeah. So we are fortunate. Yeah, and, okay. and it's funny because every time we do anything like, in, you know, it's, oh, yeah, I know that person. I Because yeah. our instructor 
is quite you know quite familiar with the community, uh, etc. But of course, and then the thing is about the microphones, audio is not necessary. Yeah. You know, so they don't. He doesn't have to worry about having a very nice uh, mic because it's sort of irrelevant. How many of his students are outside of LA Unified geographically? Um, I really don't know, but I do know that we have some more that are quite a, a distance. I don't know. So that, that's absolutely fine with, with your district as far as funding and allowing those students to come in. It, it seems to be now everybody still has to be within California, at least for so sure. California middle. Yeah, I think that's like the, the basic. Um, but and also several of the students used to come to the class in person. Mm -hmm from long, long distances because it was the only class around. Mm -hmm. And now they, they can, you know, they they can stay home. But it only branched out because of the pandemic? Or... Yeah, he was not teaching online until the pandemic. Thank you. Yeah. So anyway, like I said about the very basic minimal uh, equipment. Um, what, okay, so this is our, uh, we call we typically we call it the ESL lab so that that's where the teachers at our campus would bring students uh, to the lab just to do their regular ESL work but I use that lab to do my professional development trainings and uh, this whole started actually because of Mr. Hilterman so typically whenever he does anything he's followed by an entourage of uh, interpreters you know because he's deaf right so if he wants to talk to anybody or communicate with anybody on the campus, uh, he needs pretty much to have the interpreters with him. So they're district paid employees uh, who, are, who, you know, that's, that's their job. And one day he came to one of my professional development workshops without them because he forgot to arrange, you know, that they accompany him. And so I'm doing the workshop just like now and I'm realizing he's like totally lost because he can't hear anything I'm saying. And I had this like little brain inspiration moment. And, and I, it was just after we learned that Zoom does transcription. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, you know what? I can start a Zoom meeting right now. And then he can sit at one of the computers in the Zoom meeting and read the transcription. I said, but where, where am I going to get a microphone? And so we actually have just sort of like those mics over there. We have we had obtained from people at Burlington English headsets <laughs> quite a few that. years ago. Yeah. Barry, can we go to slideshow mode? The viewers online are requesting. Okay, um, well, I'm hoping so. And usually that gets me really confused, but sure, we can do it. We'll try it from current slide. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Our ASL teacher was deaf. I just went to, we use Google Meets for the chat. Yeah. But so if you notice, you know, they they used to provide, Burlington used to provide uh, headsets, but I, I guess they didn't provide like headsets with two ears. I guess they only had budget for one ear. <laughs> But they're okay. It's so good. You speak, but then also listen to yeah. them. Okay. But, and they, so they had, yeah, they, they have one <laughs> earpiece and then this mic. And so what I did was, you know, I, I didn't have any fancy equipment. I just stuck this mic up into the air. Wow. Uh, and you know what? The transcription was almost perfect, even way in the back of the room. So let's give the Burlington uh, people. <laughs> Shout out for that. And that worked very well. But then it occurred to me, you know, why am I not doing this for all of our trainings? Okay. So ever since that first time, every workshop that I do in the room, we set it up the, the Zoom, and then it became this hybrid experience. Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, I'm getting more people, more teachers. I typically I do them Friday afternoon. You know, we our school site does have some branch locations. Uh, you know, and so not you know before people would have to drive to the branch location. Now they don't have to do it. We get some people who are like on their way home. You know, they're not going to come in. So our overall um, attendance has risen. Our in-person attendance has sort of dwindled. We, we still have a, a a cadre of you know, four or five teachers that, you know, maybe they're already on campus, they're still teaching on campus Friday and, and they, they come in. 
And, I, and that's pretty analogous, I think, to what's happening in a lot of the classes that are doing blended learning anyway. And part of the, the issues that some of our teachers have is that, you know, the, the students are in the classroom and they start out with a nice little number six or seven. And then, but they're realizing, you know, these other people are just, they're at home. You know, and unless they have that other reason to be in the classroom that they really like it or they like the social aspect of it, you know, a lot of them are saying, you know, we're going to oh, attend from home too. And then the next week, maybe instead of seven, maybe you only have six. And then the next week, maybe you only have five. And of course, you know, it, it, it's part of being a classroom teacher is that energy you get, you know, from within the classroom. Like, boy, I would dread. I much rather would teach a class with 40 students or 50 students than one with two students. We've all been there, right? You know, it just makes the, the day very different. So in any case, that's, that's what happened with that. Uh, so some things to consider before trying this at your site. Are the teachers interested even, right? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna really have to, you know, coerce people into doing it. Okay, so you have to sort of gauge that. And, and again, it doesn't have to be all of the teachers. You, you know, you just have to find enough of them, uh, you know, who might be interested. And, um, you know, do you have teachers who are up for the extra work of teaching simultaneously? Because it does, you know, you have to have more eyes. You have to be all the time paying attention to the chat, you know, seeing what's going on. Uh, it, it's definitely a little bit more involved. You have to develop materials, you know, that are available uh, online as well. And then, you know, are the teachers well versed in your LMS and Zoom also? Because these are skills, you know, that are required. Do um, you want to try it with your existing technology like I did, or spend big money? like this school did, you know, or, or other schools. Um, so let me move this out of the way. That one too. And then um, if you're going to buy new, what's your budget, you know, for doing that? Because obviously, you know, this is high-end stuff. And um, what devices are available to your students also? Because if your students are only working uh, from their phones, then it, you know, you're going to have some issues. Um, fortunately, in LA Unified for the last year, they invested large amounts of money in buying Chromebooks for adult students. And we've been distributing those throughout the year. So. Um, I don't know how long that will continue, but at least for this past year, quite a few students have been able to get uh, devices. So, again, if you have money to spend, <laughs> you know, there's the owl. They do tend to be very, very helpful. Um, but even in these presentations, uh, you know, like we're we're told, yeah, you got to get close to the mic still, and that does limit the movement. So then there's, you know, put another owl, a second owl. Yeah. Not necessarily. So if Barry walks down that way, as long as his voice is projecting that way towards, and I don't know if the majority, obviously the majority of us that are in here are not inside the Zoom, but if you open it, everyone that is virtual can see all of us here in the class by the way you're on camera <laughs> so if Barry if you were to walk to that okay, corner now, and we let's can try do that it. let's see if it, let's see is it following me all the way down here it is but okay how about my voice if I lowered my voice a little bit see Jose says I can hear you guys well I have attended other sessions where there are issues yeah and, and again there are issues so maybe in this room it's set up a little bit better than in other rooms that's another factor to uh to consider um and, and you can chain these like there's like an extension they can put one here and there's like an extension so that they have but this other device on the right is some like super expensive 
you know, multi-directional mic and some, sometimes they're putting them up in the ceilings in another location and uh, you, you get all that. But that, again, that's if you have the budget. Yeah. And Kay is asking us a question online. If there have been any issues with teacher unions regarding high flex instruction? Um, I can't speak for all teacher unions, but I can certainly predict that probably they'd want to get involved. Uh, you know, it depends. I know that in our K-12 teachers, there are certainly have been issues uh, about our, our all teacher aspects. union. They agreed to it if the teacher wanted to, and then some of them wanted to just go async, and some wanted both. Can, can you speak up so that people can? Oh yeah. So Placer Union High School Districts up in Placer County, our our union said, yeah, if teachers want to do it, it's fine because we have one high school that's 180 students, the other one's 100, 1500. So how do you offer calculus, guitar, you name it. I was a principal at that for a while. We had to do virtual classes. The only way we could have the classes. So we've been doing it for like nine years. Yeah. So the teacher at the other school had to agree to it, but that's the only way we could have about a third of our classes. Okay. So yeah, I'm sure that, I mean, every time you introduce something new, then there's issues of equity, of about workload, right. you know, and also, not just the workload during the class, but setting things up. You know, are, are you compensated in any way for all the effort it takes to set things up? So yes, I'm sure that there are issues. Um, right now, we don't seem to have them. I think it's very similar, you know, uh, but you don't get paid any extra for doing this. Yeah. And very, um, so I'm at this school with all this wonderful equipment and our director said, you you opt in or you don't opt in, it doesn't make any difference, right? I decided not to. I want all the bugs worked out before I, I do that with in my class. I don't feel comfortable enough with, with the equipment or the training. So how long have you guys had these? This year. Oh, so this is all rel relatively new. Yeah. I see. Okay. As we have many teachers who are who are, you know, doing this, but I, I said, not yet. And seeing that, so then th that's the flip side of the coin. Can a teacher opt out yeah. of being forced to, yeah. to, to do it? Yeah, so very, yeah, very interesting. There's an additional comment on the chat. Yes, at Pittsburgh Adult, we are allowed only to do distance learning. Simultaneous is not allowed except as a pilot. Okay, and so let me ask, not allowed by whom? By the administration or by the union? And it oh, says union right. contract does not include yeah. simultaneous. Oh. Not allowed. Interesting. By who? <laughs> well, during COVID, we, our, we went back as quick as we could. Uh, LA Speak could up again, Ron. Oh, so during COVID, we had that for almost a whole year. It was half and half. Half students wouldn't come, half were there with the plastic. Because we got back as quick as we can in Plaster County. But our poor teachers? Oh my gosh, that was like learning curve with no owls. I mean, we had ViewSonics, which were great, but you're talking 35 kids, half at home, half there. Yeah, they did a good job. And do you still practice that? Do you still allow for that? Or There's some of, we have a few classes that are in the district. So. so anyway, this is sort of back to the spending money part. So uh, this was at Garden Grove uh adult education um and melissa patterson and alisa uh takauchi who's been here and maybe you've seen some of her uh presentations this comes from a um a presentation they did at tdls last year but i mean you can look at the cost of perhaps rolling that out um 32 new laptops thirty thousand right there boy you know, new Dell screens, more owl cameras. You know how much these things cost, right? The owl cameras. Dollars. Yeah. Just bought <laughs> so, um, you know, so they spent like 90 grand. Uh, and you can learn more about that. Oops, I got to touch that again. Um, you can find their whole presentation from that year. From uh, If you go to the O10 website, the easiest way to find it is just search high flex equipment in the search bar and then it will that will pop up pretty quickly so they, they did a very extensive 
presentation last year uh, when this was really new for, for everybody. I mean, now a lot of, we're a year later, there's a lot more accumulated experience, but that's a nice presentation. They had, you know, from, I think it was four different adult schools talk about how they uh, implemented it. And to answer your question, uh, Barry, about who did not allow them, uh, our virtual viewer said it was district administration. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Okay. And of course, to end up, you know, there may be some other issues that everybody has to contend with depending on where they are, or what type of school district they're in, or who's the student population uh, that you may have to contend before you get started with. So again, I only can speak with, you know, for North Valley Occupational Center and some of the other schools in our division. You know, if you're thinking about doing this or, you know, you're you've already started to do it, you know, check with your administrators and union reps to see what the situation is. Uh, and also, I'm in a K-12 system, and it's a very whole different world, you know, in universities. Uh, do we have anybody here who's in the university? No, we, but we attended one earlier that was um, a university, and it was interesting, but a lot of things were, you know, because they had to get professional in the classroom, they had a lot more budget to make high flex happen. So it's really nice to see um, kind of like a different... Like if you want to spend money, you aren't willing to spend as much money or you can't, right? And like kind of the realistic. Right. And um, in terms of uh, full disclosure, one of the teachers who had started this and was using you know, our one owl camera, he had the one owl camera, you know, in the whole school. Uh, he has since uh, opted to discontinue it. Mm -hmm. But mostly for that reason that he, he found himself sitting in the classroom with like one student after a time and he just said, you know, it's not working. I, I'd rather do it all online or all in the class. So these things are still in a, a state of flux. Oh, that's it. Let's take some questions. Yes. So I had a teacher mention that they were concerned that if they use the owl, the students would opt out of coming to in class. Although one of your Examples that I prefer in person, which is what I would have expected that students would want to come unless they couldn't. Right. Besides these examples, do you have data about larger numbers? You may remember from the beginning, I said we don't. Re we had three classes, and then my training. Oh, so you talk about your site. Yeah, just, yeah. No, right now it's just my site. That's okay. what we have. I really don't, I'm not sure what's happening in other. Uh, schools in our division. Mm -hmm. It's just that, you know, I think there's a place for it, but you really have to examine like the whys. Like some of our students do come from quite a distance. We're in the north part of the San Fernando Valley, if that speaks to, to any of you uh, who know Los Angeles area. And, you know, think about some of our students come from Lancaster, Palmdale. That's a, a good hour drive from where we are you know, to come to school, you know, and so, um, because, you know, they like, a lot, I can't, I can't believe this, I had a student in one of the classes tell me he comes from, um, he, he works in Oxnard, wow. and lives in Lancaster, yeah. and so, like, he drives from Lancaster to Oxnard, for those of you who know Southern California, in the morning, That's and then on the way back, life. like, we're the halfway point. Yeah. So he comes to class like on his way home. He needs to do the virtual. <laughs> well, I don't know because he's still going to be driving to Oxnard. That's where he works. Yeah. Well, we're we're looking at taking over some of Tahoe trucking programs because they don't have the budget for it. We're where you know that's an hour and a half of snow and ugly, and it yeah. just makes sense to do it. Yeah. So there will always be some students who. who cannot really come. And so that's like a whole population that is underserved now. Mm -hmm. And so they will benefit tremendously by online instruction. But again, in our district, maybe they won't be coming to an online class sponsored by our school, but they'll be going to this new entity called you know, Adult Education Virtual Academy, see? And then 
there's a whole nother group, which is this, well, sometimes I can come to class. I really like being in class, but I can't all the time. And so I'd like to do it online. So that's, it's really two separate populations and you have to figure out, is there enough of that? You know, I mean, think about what you've been doing for the last 20, 30 years. You've had those students in your class. They just don't come when they're, when they can't, they stay home. And then sometimes if that staying home is a little bit too long, then they drop out until the next, you know, semester. But with this, this method, there's a greater chance, I think, that they can stay together with the class and, and finish out the semester. Yeah. So I think that's really where uh, the population that will, that's why teachers may want to, to do this for the benefit of their students. Yeah. And you're an ITTA. Right. Is there one at each of the 10 sites? Yes. And in fact, we had a great presentation earlier today where we talked about the way our school district, you know, to, you know, I'm very grateful to have this job, which is basically helping teachers use all of this stuff. But we do have one at, our, at each of the 10 sites. Um, they think that we keep hearing they may post that position for this virtual academy as well. I, I keep looking at the, uh, the job postings on a regular basis, you know, to see if they've done that. But yeah, but we're fortunate that we have this position. It's an out of classroom position. Uh, it's not necessarily full time. Some of the schools have more hours, some have less hours. But we do. Anything else? Yeah. We have an extra comment, and it may have been regarding your data request. Casas has been doing cases. Casa has, pardon me. CASAS has been doing a small action research project on high floods. One of the agencies is Merced. They have very full in-class sessions and have up to 20 online students, I believe. Teacher was very successful with student learning games. So yeah. it might be a program you're interested in. But, but again, my first question is, how do they define that what what are they actually doing? But and not that it's How the best thing. the high flex? Yeah, because they they use that word high flex, but what does it actually mean? Yeah. Um, and then again, geographically, I can believe up in Merced County, right? You may have a lot of people who can't make it to the adult school, mm -hmm. and just because of the distances uh, involved, right? Well, uh, that's it for me. I'm I'm happy to let you guys go.